Today, I'm cooking homemade authentic Thai red curry paste. I like making and storing them at home for a quick red curry chicken dish or to use in stir-fry dishes. This recipe yields 1.3 kilograms of red curry paste. The ingredients needed are 130 grams of dried guajillo chili, wash and soak in hot water for 2 hours to soften, 50 grams of dried chili, wash and soak in hot water for 1 hour to soften. This is what the guajillo chili and dried chili looks like before soaking. 100 grams of lemongrass, 40 grams of young galangal, 20 grams of fresh turmeric, 110 grams of kaffir lime. I will only be using them for their skin. 1 tablespoon of coriander powder, half tablespoon of cumin powder, 40 grams of balajan or shrimp paste, half tablespoon of salt, half tablespoon of white peppercorn, 6 cilantro roots, 10 kaffir lime leaves, 120 grams of garlic, 300 grams of shallots, 700 ml of water for blending. 150 ml of concentrated tamarind water and 200 ml of concentrated coconut milk. The full list of ingredients is in the Seymour link. Now we have all the ingredients ready. Let's prepare them. Cut the lemongrass thinly as they are fibrous. Place in a bowl and leave aside. Peel the galangal and cut into pieces. Leave them with the lemongrass. Cut the turmeric into pieces without peeling the skin. This prevents it from staining the utensil. Peel the dark green skin layer of the kaffir lime with the sharp knife. Avoid the white layer. This is because the dark green layer is very fragrant. However, the white layer will make the red curry paste a bit of a bitter taste. Alright, leave them aside. Cut the cilantro roots into smaller pieces and put aside. Do the same for the dry chili. And guajillo chili. I have also peeled the skin off the shallots and garlic. Next, Wash and pound the white peppercorn in a mortar until fine, like this. Add the kaffir lamb skin and continue pounding for 5 to 6 minutes or until the oil and fragrance are released. Now add the cut cilantro roots and continue pounding until fine and well combined. Alright, this is good. Empty into a bowl and set aside. It smells lovely. Next, blend the ingredients, add the lemongrass, galangal, turmeric, shrimp paste, powdered kaffir lime mixture, cumin powder, coriander powder, and 150 ml of water for easy blending. Cover and blend it for about 30 seconds or until it becomes a smooth paste. Alright, it has become really fine and smooth. Add in all the garlic and 50 ml of water. Continue to blend for 10 seconds. The mixture has become really fine and smooth paste. Add the shallots and about 100 ml of water for easy blending. Blend it again. As it is a bit hard to blend, add in about 100 ml of water and continue to blend. After 15 seconds, the mixture has become really fine. Transfer the mixture to a large bowl and leave it aside. Next, blend one third of chili and about 150 ml of water for about one minute. See, the chili has become super fine now. Transfer it out to the bowl with the other ingredients blended earlier. Repeat with the balance of two thirds of chili and 150 ml of water. After 30 seconds, I have a super fine blended chili mixed with the earlier batches. 
All right, all ingredients are blended and transferred to the mixing bowl here. Stir to mix until well combined. Once it is well mixed, the color should be a bright red color because of the guajillo chili. All right, it is done. Let's cook it. Switch on the heat. In the pan, put 200 ml of concentrated coconut milk and all the kefir lime leaves. Bring it to a boil for about 2 minutes. And let it boil for another 2 more minutes. Once it has become a rolling boil, add the blended ingredients. Add in all the salt and all the tamarind water. Stir to mix the paste until incorporated. Alright, all ingredients are well mixed. Continuously stir the paste for about 60 minutes or until all the water has evaporated and it becomes a thick paste. After 10 minutes, the mixture is starting to come to a boil. The consistency is thin and diluted. Continue to stir. After 20 minutes, the ingredients has started releasing their lovely fragrance. The consistency is still very thin. After 30 minutes, a lot of water has evaporated and the paste is getting slightly thicker. However, the consistency is not right yet. The smell of the red curry paste is so lovely. After 40 minutes, the consistency is much thicker and it looks more like a paste now. Although its hole is shaped, it still falls off the spatula easily. The smell is super fragrant. Keep stirring. After 50 minutes, almost all of the water has evaporated. Look at the consistency of the red curry paste now. It holds its shape and does not fall off the spatula easily. Just a little bit more. After 1 hour, the pan is getting dry and the paste is really thick. It holds its shape well and it cling on to the spatula. This is the right consistency. Once it cool, it will become the perfect red curry paste. Switch off the heat and let it cool. After resting in the pan for almost 2 hours, the red curry paste has completely cooled down. Once cool, divide into small container of 200 to 300 gram. Each container can be used once or twice. Label the weight and date for easy reference. The red curry paste can be kept in the fridge for about 3 to 4 weeks or 6 to 8 months in the freezer. This is my version of the authentic homemade red curry paste. Stay tuned for the delicious red curry chicken using this red curry paste. Thank you for watching. Please like and share if you have enjoyed the video. This is Home Cooking with Somjit. Thank you and bye-bye.